eat the entire version, it would take me about eight hours. So I expect I will not be more than seven hours. <laughs> not at all, not at all. Just joking. <laughs> Madam Speaker, first let me deal with economic and fiscal performance for 2013. The World Economic Outlook, published by the IMF in October 2013, estimates global growth of 2.9% for 2013, the year just passed. The IMF has projected that growth in Latin America will increase from 2.7% in 2012 to 3.3% in 2013. Also, the World Economic Outlook estimates that with the exception of Barbados, where the economy is expected to contract by 0.8%, all other Caribbean countries outside the ECCU will experience an increase in output in 2013. For the Eastern Caribbean Currency Union, the IMF and the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank are projecting an expansion in output for 2013. The ECCB estimates an increase in economic output for all members with the exception of Anguilla and Dominica. Overall, the ECCU area is projected to grow by 1.1% 1 .1 in 2013 as compared to 0.2% in 2012. This expansion in output was stimulated mainly by improved performance in the construction sector. Based on the most recent data published by the ECCB, Antigua and Barbuda grew by 1.2% in the year on the review. This economic performance in Antigua and Barbuda can be attributed to continued implementation of policy actions and reform measures to improve growth and strengthen the fiscal environment. In 2013, the government of Antigua and Barbuda continued the Construct Antigua and Barbuda initiative, which helped to boost growth in the construction sector. The mining and quarrying sector also grew significantly by 21.7%, and the agriculture sector rebounded from a decline of about 4% in 2012 to record an increase of 1.9% 1 in 2013. On the other hand, the hotel and restaurant sector declined by 0.6% in 2013 as compared to growth of 3.4% in 2012. The decline in this sector is mainly due to fewer stayover arrivals in the summer months. And this, Madam Speaker, is because our two primary source markets where our visitors come from, they have not yet completely shaken off the effects of their recent recession. Nonetheless, economic performance in 2013 remained positive, reflecting the effectiveness of the policies pursued by the government over the past several years. As the recovery in the global economy strengthens and the government continues to pursue sound macroeconomic policies, the Antigua and Barbuda economy will continue to grow and the level of unemployment will return to pre-crisis levels. With regard to fiscal performance for 2013, the past year, a current account deficit of 54.7 million is projected for 2013. An overall objective of the government is to ensure that it is able to generate the revenue needed to meet its current expenditure. This means that current revenue, which is generated from tax and non-tax sources, must be aligned with current expenditure. The government was able to realize this objective in 2010 as the current account balance improved considerably from a deficit of 307 million in 2009 to a surplus of 38.1 million in 2010. While the current account balance remains significantly below the deficit recorded in 2009, the alignment of current expenditure and current revenue has not yet been fully realized due to the underperformance of revenue between 2011 and 2013. By the time all the figures are in for the year on the review, we are expected to have collected less revenue than we did in the previous year. The preliminary figures indicate a 5% reduction in the revenues. And though the revenues overall were slightly down, we had increased collection from direct taxes, which rose by 14%. The increased yield from direct taxes in 2013 is mainly due to enhanced collection of revenue from the corporation tax. The bulk of government expenditure continues to be for salaries and wages. 
These commitments severely limit what is available to invest, invest directly in the economy, especially on capital projects. The need to expand the economy continues to remain urgent. That is why the economic policies we have undertaken over the years that have now begun to bear fruit were indeed the right ones. We say the foundation is laid and there is no turning back. Yeah. Antigua and Barbuda has now witnessed two successive years of growth and in this year we will continue to build on those gains. Growing the economy not only produces more economic advancement opportunities for people but effectively widens the tax prospects to enable government to collect more and then in turn do more for our people. In the year under review 2013 there was a 1.6 percent increase in wages and salaries largely through hiring of essential personnel such as police and defense force recruits. Because of our debt management strategy, we paid 35% less than was projected for 2013 in interest payments on the national debt. That policy, Madam Speaker, saved us over $30 million this year alone. In the context of expenditure, this graphically shows why the issue of prudent debt management was so crucial in building a foundation for growth. We are determined to earn savings through prudent management practices. This will require sustained efforts through our public financial management reform program that is being graciously funded by the European Union. Madam Speaker, improving our procurement procedures is a critical part of this reform process. In 2014, we will implement the Procurement Administration Act to improve the system for procurement and contract administration as part of the government's ongoing war on waste in the public sector. It is also consistent with the policies we have pursued and the measures we have implemented to reduce expenditure in areas prone to inefficiency. One area consistently raised during our public consultations was spending on vehicles. In response to this, a vehicle use and management policy is currently being implemented under the careful stewardship of the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Works, Mr. Walter Christopher. Another area where there has been a reduction in expenditure is overtime. In 2009, nearly $20 million was budgeted for overtime. For 2013, overtime is projected to amount to no more than three. 0.5 million. Madam Speaker, this government has demonstrated a commitment to reducing spending by improving expenditure management systems and introducing policies and measures that target areas of abuse and wastage. That's why we say, Madam Speaker, the foundation has been laid, has been laid and there is no turning back. Yes. And even in the repayment of the debt, our domestic creditors receive the larger proportion of these funds. And so 70% of all repayments last year were to local creditors. That was money that was pumped back into the national economy, which will help propel us along this growth trajectory we have been reporting on. Madam Speaker, though investment in new capital projects had been restricted, the government prioritized settlement of outstanding amounts to local contractors, merchants, and suppliers. Between January and November of 2013, we made 78.7 million in payments to local contractors, merchants, and suppliers. And since June of 2010, the Treasury has paid more than $350 million to our local contractors, merchants, and suppliers. I wish to commend the Accountant General Dr. Cleopatra Gittens, the management and staff of the Treasury Department for their Herculean efforts in the face of unprecedented and challenging circumstances. In 2012, the government recorded a primary surplus of 40.9 million. For 2013, the primary balance is projected to be a deficit of about 28 million. This outcome is mainly due to lower revenues than forecasted in budget 2013. Despite this underperformance in revenue, 
the government decided not to make as deep an adjustment to expenditure, which had been the case in previous years when revenue fell short of budgeted amounts. It was determined that a primary, a small primary deficit would be acceptable to avoid reducing critical expenditure on payroll, capital works, road repair and maintenance, and essential social programs. Madam Speaker, when the UPP administration began the process of reforming fiscal management in Antigua and Barbuda, the overall objective was to secure fiscal stability by ensuring that on average the government attains a balanced budget. Having implemented the fiscal consolidation program, Antigua and Barbuda has made significant strides towards achieving fiscal stability. This is reflected in the improvement in the overall fiscal deficit, which has declined from 592 million in 2009 to 92 million in 2013. As a result of this government's interventions, we were able to avoid some of the more severe fiscal policies that had to be pursued by some other countries. Some of these austere policies include sizable wage reductions for public servants in some countries, retrenchment of public workers in other countries, disbanding social programs, reducing government pensions, and cutting or eliminating essential services. When the fiscal consolidation program was being developed, this administration determined that it would not pursue a retrenchment program and it would safeguard the social programs provided to the population. The outcome of Antigua and Barbuda's engagement with the International Monetary Fund has been an opportunity to access over $270 million from the fund and to leverage an additional $150 million from other sources such as the Caribbean Development Bank, the European Union and the World Bank. Madam Speaker, this administration successfully completed its engagement with the IMF in June 2013 and having achieved the goals and objectives set out in the fiscal consolidation program, Antigua and Barbuda is firmly on the path to fiscal and debt sustainability. I turn now, Madam Speaker, to the strategy for 2014, building the new economy for growth and prosperity. Looking forward to 2014, the global economy is still recuperating from the 2008 meltdown, even as some remnants of the crisis continue to threaten sustained growth and stability. Despite these challenges, the IMF's World Economic Outlook anticipates the global economy will grow by 3.6% in 2014. The ECCB projects that the currency union will grow by 1.9% in 2014. Antigua and Barbuda is projected to continue its economic recovery in 2014 as the country records its third successive year of growth at a projected rate of 1.9%. However, there is significant potential for greater economic performance in Antigua and Barbuda as several investment projects are slated to begin in 2014. Madam Speaker, the policies pursued by this government over the past few years could be likened to a farmer preparing his land, tilling the soil, removing any weeds and rocks that would impede the growth of his crop, introducing fertilizer and irrigation systems, and planting the seeds. The seeds that we planted have begun to develop, and Antigua and Barbuda is set to yield the fruits of this administration's efforts. In 2014, we will continue to cultivate the land and nurture the crop in preparation for the harvest. This will be a harvest of strong economic growth, job creation, improved services for all our citizens and residents, and enhanced social programs for the vulnerable in our society. Over the next 18 to 24 months, we expect the creation of nearly 2,500 jobs through the construction and operation of a number of private sector and public sector projects. Hundreds of new jobs will be created in construction with the start of the Beaches Project, the agreement for which we signed late last year. 
A number of investors have announced plans to pump millions of dollars into the construction of resorts, condominiums, and facilities this year as a result of a growing confidence in this economy and the policies of this government. Since 2010, when the total value of investment projects amounted to $299 million, there has been a steady increase in investor confidence. This is evidenced by the growth in the value of total investment projects approved by the Antigua and Barbuda Investment Authority in each subsequent year. The total value of investments in 2011 amounted to 321 million and in 2012 amounted to 788 million. In 2013, the total value of investment projects approved by the ABIA nearly tripled to about 2.1 billion. This significant improvement in investment projects is not only a signal of investors' desire to do business in Antigua, it is also a very clear indication that over the next 12 months, citizens and residents can expect a marked increase in economic activity and employment. The 2.1 billion in approved investments represents about 30 projects across seven sectors, 23 of which are funded by local investors. This is an indication that investment for economic growth and employment generation need not come only from external sources. So, some of the projects that have already started or will be undertaken over the coming year include a resort project at Pigeon Point by a developer New Century Development Company, the Emerald Cove Project, the Rendezvous Bay Real Estate Corporation, the Caribbean Premium Motors Limited, and completion of the Hodges Bay Club Resort by JSN Development Group Limited and Blue Pearl Limited. These and other projects approved by the ABIA in 2013 are expected to generate jobs for nearly 1,000 citizens and residents. Madam Speaker, though the government is encouraged by the positive developments in respect of the investment projects approved by the ABIA, we recognize that our continued success at attracting foreign direct investment and supporting local investment will, be, will depend on our ongoing efforts to develop and introduce new investment inducing strategies. Two such strategies are the Tourism and Business Special Incentives Act of 2013 and the Citizenship by Investment Program. We are also continuing to push policies that will also encourage small business development. We will continue to promote the Outsource Antigua Initiative, which, when fully operational, will create jobs for 1,200 citizens and residents in areas such as call center services, data entry services, engineering services, mobile app development, web analytics, healthcare services, photo editing services, and software development. Initially, Outsource Antigua will target unemployed youth and provide business opportunities for micro and small businesses. We will also be strengthening the credit guarantee scheme and increasing the ceiling on the maximum loans that may be guaranteed from 50,000 to 100,000. All small businesses that are registered with the ABIA can access financial support through the credit guarantee scheme. Under the credit guarantee scheme, the government for those young, bright entrepreneurs who want to invest but who lack the collateral, the government will provide up to 80% of their investment. It is, necessary, it is necessary that any investor should have, as we say, skin in the game. And so we insist that such person must have at least 20% equity in terms of the collateral. We will also be strengthening, as I said, the credit guarantee schemes because our people need a hand up and not mere handouts. 
and by our policies, we are doing just that. Leadership. That's why, Madam Speaker, we say 